Welcome back to another fishing adventure. It's the middle of April. Things are starting to warm up and green up a little bit here in northern Iowa. It's about quarter to two in the afternoon. I'm fishing the warmest part of the day today because that's when the fish have been seeming to be the most active. Spicy Sriracha Tiger Nuts from Tom's Baits today. Link is in the description if you want to get some of these uh, baits for yourself. This is the only hook bait I'm fishing with today. Just Tiger Nuts. They work good. I'm just going to put all three uh, rigs with tiger nuts. Main reason I'm fishing this pond here today is uh, because it contains mirror carp. I like to catch mirror carp. I didn't catch any mirror carp until like until like the tail end of the season last year. Then I caught two in one day that day. That was crazy. And along with the spicy theme here I've got spicy pack bait too. I made this at home before I left here a little while ago. This is just uh, old-fashioned oats, sweet feet pellets, a can of cream corn, and some chili powder. Last year I tried to pay attention to uh, any correlation between spicy bait and whether or not I catch catfish on it. And I, I kind of had a theory that, uh, just an anecdotal uh, evidence of my own, that, that I catch less catfish when I use a, a spicy pack bait in conjunction with a spicy hook bait. But, I don't know, last year, last fall, I, I had a, a fishing session where I was fishing with this exact same combination here, and all I caught was a whole bunch of catfish. <laughs> so I think the catfish are just so hardy. They, they'll just eat about anything. I mean, look at the garbage that people fish for them with. I mean, they'll eat just about anything. A little bit of chili powder isn't going to turn them off. The theory was that, that catfish, even though they are absolutely not picky eaters, that they would be just a tiny bit more choosy than a carp would. But I don't think that's the case. I think they'll both, both species will eat just about anything. Somebody recently commented on one of my carp videos saying that uh, they just didn't understand carp fishing. There's no skill involved. Carp will eat anything. How, how can the, why would you do that? The carp will eat anything. This is like no skill involved. No doubt a bass fisherman, I assume. Didn't say, but uh, let me cast this before I continue talking about that nonsense. I did respond to that comment, and my response was, well, that's one of the things that I absolutely love about fish carp fishing is that uh, blockheads like you, I don't think I called them a blockhead, but blockheads like you, guys like you, uh, just can't seem to wrap your little heads around it, and I think it's amusing. But that whole idea like, oh, carp will eat anything, so then there's no skill involved, like, bass eat a piece of plastic that you're dragging through the water. I mean, I've caught, a, I've caught bass on this as I'm reeling it in with no bait on it at all. They'll eat anything that moves. Uh, they're fish. They have tiny brains. They're a stupid animal. All of them are. <laughs> I mean, the skill is not about what kind of bait you're using. <laughs> anyway. The skill for fishing for any species of fish, really, is uh, knowing the, the right place, the right time, and the right technique. Uh, whether or not the fish will eat anything or not it really has nothing to do with it, in my opinion. But anyway, that's enough. Of, that's more attention than that guy deserves. Let's get back to fishing here. Uh, it's windy today. It's probably 20 miles an hour wind. And the reason I'm fishing in this particular spot is because I'm hiding behind a cut bank that's back behind the camera here, uh, just to just to be out of the wind a little bit. And because uh, I don't think that. As far as fishing conditions, I don't think the wind matters much today. Water, everything's about water temperature this early in the year. So water temperature and then time of day, the warmest part of the day when the water temperature will be at its warmest for the day. That's what I'm focusing on today. I'm fighting with this huge tangle of fishing line that I just, I just saw this part and I guess that was just the scratch in the surface because there's like it goes down into the ground and then there's a whole another big bird nest of it here. Like it looks like somebody emptied their whole flipping spool right here at some point. Fisherman.
Here we go. Bite, bite, bite. Fish on. Oh, I feel the line rubbing on a rock. I feel the line rubbing on a rock. I gotta go down there. I've lost many a fish here at this spot. Some boulders down there. See that boulder there? It's like four feet across. There's more of them down there in the water. Yeah, this fish is still on there. I'm gonna give him some wine here. Yeah, he's pulling. Yeah, I'm gonna let him run a little bit. See if he will uh, get that line out of the, the rocks that it's in. Just gotta be patient here. Give him a little bit of line. Still on there. Oh, and he's taking it. Well, I've been messing with this for probably a good five or ten minutes. The fish is still on there, but the line's wrapped around a rock or something. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it sit for a few more minutes. Give it a little bit more slack and uh yeah, I'm going to give it 10 more minutes. Maybe that fish will figure it out. It's been about 20 minutes since that fish first took off. I'm just going to have to just going to have to break it. It's not coming untangled. All right, something came loose. I don't think my line snapped. I think I have the fish. Yeah, I do. I have the fish. Okay, this is that's interesting. That's unusual that I I yanked so hard I was trying to break the line and somehow that that pulled whatever it was loose and I I still have the fish. Yeah, there he is. There he is. It's a good fish too. I mean, how good was this fish would be hooked, huh? Come on. Oh, oh no. Okay, in the net. He's hooked good, but I mean, I don't know what. what I'm gonna look at the rig here, see if I can figure out what 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 was snagged up, but. I mean, he's looked in the corner of the mouth there. Yeah, first fish. I had to work kind of hard to get this fish. It took about 20 minutes or so to just, uh, I don't know, just messing with the line, pulling it from different directions, letting line out, taking line back. In the end, I tried to break my line and it broke free from whatever it was wrapped around. I'm sure it's boulders. I fished here before. There's boulders in the water. I've seen them on my sonar on my kayak before six seven pound fish nice fish pretty cold back in the water he goes well, thanks for the fun fight that was interesting see you next time well i could feel the line rubbing on something and i don't see any marks on the sinker the hook is definitely not damaged at all uh, my bobber stop is even right there. It's not slid up. So it must, it had to have been just line wrapped around something. It might have been a stick, I suppose. Sometimes, sometimes when I like, if I'm caught on a rotten log or a tree down in the water, I pull hard enough that rotten stick that my line is wrapped around will break off. I didn't bring any sticks back with me, but it might have just fallen off. Maybe that's what happened. I'll, I'll run my fingers up my line here and, uh, check for any damage but that ended up pretty well i thought i was gonna have to break it off cool it's been about an hour it's about three o'clock kind of getting into the warmest part of the day is probably gonna be around four o'clock or so and uh i'll fish until five i'll see how it goes and yeah i'm gonna cast it right back over there <laughs> a little a little bit farther that way from where i was but Fish highway over there by those boulders. Uh, 
All right, that's a bite. And it's not in the boulder field. Or at least not that boulder field anymore. It's a different boulder field over here. <laughs> been about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes since I had that other fish. That feels nice. Yeah, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. The bite's starting to come alive here. It just drops off about 15 feet off the bank here. It just drops off, so this fish is just coming up over the ledge here. I haven't seen him yet. did catch a glimpse. It's not a mirror carp, but it's a nice fish. Come on in. Gotcha. Let's see, this hook, this fish is not hooked in the, in the mouth. He's hooked just kind of next to the mouth there. He was just kind of probing around in there, poking around that hook, flipped up and got him. That's why I use offset hooks. I like offset hooks, and I don't, that's just goes against the normal carp fishing uh, logic. But uh, as you can see, I have good success. Well, that was a lot more pleasurable catch than that first one. No snags involved in this one. A little smaller fish. Nice. Hopefully the bite will start picking up. Like I said, it's about 3.30. Warmest part of the day is probably around 4 o'clock. Back in the water. So long. Hook bait did not survive that fight. I'm gonna put some more of these spicy tiger nuts on. First, I'm gonna check that hook, make sure it's still nice and sharp. Yep, it grabs my finger skin, no problem there. Still good. I don't sharpen hooks, I just replace them when they get dinged or dulled. I believe that if, uh, if you mess around with, with, if you take a file to a hook, you're going to cause more damage to that hook than anything and you're just going to make a really thin uh, point that's going to easily get banged up by just a tiniest little bump on a rock or something when you cast it out. You cast it out, that bumps a rock, boom, you've got a dull hook. I just, I don't sharpen hooks. And a chemically sharpened hook, chemically sharpened hook like, like what these are, that's, it's, a, it's a sharper point than is achievable by mechanical means. You cannot get sharper than, than chemically sharpened uh, with a file. You just can't. An ultra sharp hook is just a critical detail uh, when fishing with a rig like this, with a bolt rig. When, when you're counting on a two or three ounce uh, weight to uh, stick that hook into the, into the fish's lip, um, it needs to be really sharp for that small amount of weight to be able to to be able to drive that hook in at least a little bit. The hooks that I like to use and all the other gear that I use is uh, listed in the description. Big long gear list down in the description if you're interested in checking that out. There we go, more action. on. This feels like a catfish. I'm just gonna horse this guy in. Maybe he'll get off before he gets to the bank here. Nope. Talking about hook sharpness here now. It's, it's difficult to get the hooks out of these catfish without damaging it bending it out of shape because their lips are, their jaws are so tough. Let's see if I can get it out with my fingers without grabbing it with the pliers first. Alright, well I probably damaged it, better check it. That'd be a good one to eat, but not today. Belly full of pack bait. Well I didn't bend the hook and I didn't grab the point. Yeah, it's still good. Nice. Same rod that I just cut that last carp on. Same spot. Yeah, pull some drag. 
Sometimes people ask me what pound, how much pressure do I have on my drag when I'm fighting a fish? I have no idea. I change it all the time. I'm changing it depending on the conditions, how big of a fish I think I've got on the line, uh, how close the fish is to the bank or not. What kind? Of, I mean, it just—it's just something that you gotta you gotta just work with and practice with to get a feel for uh, how much is the right amount. Obviously, you don't want to have it so loose that the fish can just run around forever for 45 minutes. Uh, but then you got to have it loose enough so that when they do a big power run like that, that they can take line rather than rip the hook out of their mouth. That's the whole point of managing the drag, so that the, the hook doesn't rip out of the fish's mouth. I like to be especially gentle with them when they're here close to the bank because they can see you and they will go on some pretty fierce runs here when they see you or they see a net coming at them. Like that. If I had that drag too tight, that hook would have just ripped right out of the mouth. I'm sure a lot of you can probably relate that you've lost se several fish right next to the bank. I have too. Oh, just jumped out of the net. All right, net jumper, gotcha. He's hooked right in the right in the tough part of the bottom lip there. Yeah, this is a great looking fish. Pretty stocky fish. Seven, seven pounds, something like that would be my guess. I'm not gonna weigh any, any fish this size. This is about average size fish for, for this lake here. I mean, there might be a giant or two. I've just never, I've caught lots of fish out of here and never caught anything, you know, huge. But uh, it's about average. These are fun fish. Anything over five pounds is a heck of a lot of fun to catch. <laughs> Back he goes. See ya. He's swimming away slow. Got another run. It's only been like five minutes. That feels nice. This is on my middle rod, so I'm gonna have to land the fish in the middle here. A little, little trickier, I guess, so I don't mess up my other two lines. This is a nice fish. Get in here. Got him. Yeah, it's a pretty nice fish, too. A little skinny, long skinny. Probably a male fish. Five, six pounds, something like that. Fish four. Bite's picking up. It's a nice day, warm, wind kind of cut down a little bit. Beautiful spring day. Oh, you got me, I deserved it. See ya. Oh yeah. Fish on. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, still there. It has slowed down a bit. It's getting kind of late. It's almost five o'clock. Around five, the, the sun's gonna be getting low and the temps will start falling again. The bite should shut off. That's when I'm planning on leaving. Come on, mirror carp. That's a good fish. Come on. Oh, that was easy. That was an easy net job, thank you. Looked right in the bottom lip like he's supposed to be. Yeah, pretty great afternoon of carp fishing. I think it was his fifth fish. Pretty great, pretty great afternoon. You know, get out there and catch some carp, you know. It takes no skill. As you can see, any dummy can do it. So, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. See you on the next one. Mm -hmm.